Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. We're gonna put the carburetor on today. Ooh, man, so I also wanna talk a little bit about carburetors. I'm not an expert, but the basics are going to be covered today. And the biggest basic and performance upgrade you can ask for when you start adding headers, doing mods to your, your heads, airflow, etc., you need a bigger carburetor. So what most of us struggle with in the hobby is converting from your stock carburetor to a bigger carburetor. There's always some weird thing that has to go on to change. So at first, I'm going to go do a little bench review. And what I'm using is a Barry Grant 750 double pumper. And I made some changes to it. And I'll go through the changes as we walk through it. So if you're new here, we're at the tail end of a monster rebuild and Tremec install. And we're still trying to fire the engine and we have to get the carb in and do some other things. So um, subscribe if you haven't so you can follow along. So let's get into it and, and I'll take you to the workbench and show you what we're working with. Hey guys, so here's my uh, Barry Grant Speed Demon. It's a 750. If you were to line this up next to a Holley, they almost look the same. Because Barry Grant, I believe, used to work for Holley back in the day. And so it's a spin-off company. I could be wrong. Again, I'm not an expert. Um, some of the things on this carburetor I like are uh, windows in the bowls. You can see your fuel level. Um, I convert it to AN style, so these you can order from JEGS or Summit Racing. Just measure your distance from inlet to inlet. I added a, a fuel pressure gauge. It helps with troubleshooting. you always second-guessing yourself if you have enough fuel or if you have uh, fuel pressure. Easy way to look while you're in the engine bay. If you turn this around, one of the best things you can do is remove the vacuum secondaries. I have mechanical secondaries now. I also changed the floats to race, road racing floats, so when you do hard cornering, it doesn't affect the um, carburetor level very much. And I also changed to annular jets. I don't know if you can see them. But they're now annular. And that's the, the basics there. Now, what you might be looking at here is like, what is going on with these attachments? Well, when you convert from a stock carburetor to an off-the-shelf aftermarket carburetor, typically your connections won't work anymore. So you have to get these adapters. So JEGS has different adapters you can get. Um... I went with this particular setup because I was able to bore out this rear setting so I can fit my stock GM um, gas pedal connector. And then I came up with a little clevis design, you know, with a cotter pin. And then I wanted I wanted spring loaded so when I so it spring return. This bolts right to the carburetor studs. And I like it a lot. So that's what I did to my carburetor. I want to go ahead and go to the intake manifold and show you what else uh, to just think about when you're putting your carburetor in. Hey guys, been a while since we've seen this view, huh? Well, this is my intake manifold, duh. What I added are studs. This makes it super easy to install your carburetor because it just plops right on and then there's a little bare area, there's no thread, where you can drop your nut on and get it started. Super easy. Speaking of dropping nuts, be very careful when you're working around this open area because you don't want to drop anything in there. That will be a bad day. Okay, so what you're probably noticing right off the bat, if you take off your stock carburetor, you might have what's called a spread bore which is two small holes and two big holes. This is a square bore, so they're, it's just uniform. It's a cross-plane crank, I mean intake manifold. Cross-plane crank, duh. And make sure you buy the carburetor that matches your intake manifold. I have a heat deflector, which sits right on top. It's a rubber insulator with a aluminum heat shield 
and this helps prevent your fuel bowls which hang over each end from getting too hot if they get too hot the fuel starts to evaporate and you get what's called vapor lock vapor lock symptoms are like um, tough start you know, it's hard to start when it's recently um, been used or you'll um, you'll kind of buck when you try to accelerate all symptoms of uh, vapor lock the fuel in the fuel bowls is evaporating and turning to gas and it's injecting that kind of evaporated gas in your engine and doesn't like it it wants moist cool fuel so anyway i got this on there it's optional you don't have to use it. all right gasket one-handed carb drop those studs are awesome that's why they're there and then put your adapter on. You have to finagle it a little bit. There we go. Nuts, nuts, washers, nuts. Nuts, just drop them on the studs. They sit right on top. And then we can snug it down. The typical X pattern on torquing. All right, now I can attach my return springs. Take my cotter pin off. My washers. So I have multiple washers because I want it to be a kind of a tight fit on that cotter pin. There we go. It's not going anywhere. All right, let's get our let's get our cable attached. So here's the stock cable from the pedal. Fits right through that bore we made. And there's my custom attachment. So it goes in between. All right. There we go. Ready for business. All right, guys, I got one more surprise for you. Check out the before picture. Remember when I complained about too much chrome and shiny stuff? And we painted the March bracket black i actually painted this to, to match black it used to say jegs on it well check this out bam haha -ha, you like that that's actually gloss black i think that looks pretty awesome Hey guys, that was easy. I told you I'm not an expert at carburetors. <laughs> but what I do know is the more airflow you get, typically the more power, as long as you have everything else in tune. Headers, heads, exhaust, get more air in there. What I highly recommend is you actually go get a dyno run or two in to get your carb settings right. So I had mine rejetted. Um, I had it uh tuned on a dyno engine dyno so it was 505 horsepower 600 pound feet of torque so i can't wait to fire it up subscribe if you haven't already because next episode we're going to get rid of this thing right here too pet boyish gross what was i thinking well you know the drill guys Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.